Hello and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. My name is Brandon and I am here to help you learn. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel. If you are a returning viewer, it's great to have you back. So let's go ahead and get started. So this video is about the analysis of covariance or ANCOVA. Now you may also see it as ANACOVA, A-N-A-C-O-V-A, but ANCOVA and ANACOVA are the same thing. Now this video is just the first in a series of videos about ANCOVA, so it's just an introduction. So we will talk about what you need to know to even begin learning it. We'll talk about obviously what it is, what our data might look like, and some of the benefits it provides when doing statistical analysis. So what should you know before starting this video so you don't get lost? First, you should have an understanding of ANOVA. What are main effects and interaction effects? What are sum of squares? What are mean squares? How to read ANOVA tables? What are F statistics and significance values? And what are post hoc analyses such as Tukey, Bonferroni, etc.? You should also have an understanding of linear regression. So regression slopes, p-values, and coefficients. You can think of ANCOVA as a marriage of ANOVA and regression. So if you understand those two things, you can get a firm grasp of ANCOVA. As with many of my videos, I like to teach topics through an example. So we'll call this University Study Skills, and it piggybacks off the example I provide in my ANOVA videos. So 21 students at the Autonomous University of Madrid, AUM in Spain, were selected for an informal study about student study skills. Seven first year, seven second year, and seven third year undergraduates were randomly selected during the second semester of the academic year. The students were given a study skills assessment, having a maximum score of 100. As researchers, we are interested in whether or not a difference exists somewhere between the three different year levels. So as it is on the screen now, this is a very simple one-way ANOVA. We have three groups, first year students, second year and third year, and we are measuring them on this study skills assessment, and we are looking for a difference between or among those three levels of our groups. So our data might look like this. So in the first column, we have the year one scores, in the middle column, the year two scores, and in the third column, the year three scores. As you can see, these scores are out of 100. And again, as it is presented here, it's just a simple one-way ANOVA. However, as researchers, we know that it is quite possible that more successful students have better study skills. Therefore, we also record each student's GPA. Student GPA will serve as our covariate. We can express this in a few ways. One, we would like to know if there are differences between or among the three groups in study skills while controlling for the effects of GPA on study skills. So let me repeat that part. While controlling for the effects of GPA, our covariate, on study skills are dependent variable. Two, how would the three groups measure on study skills if all students had the same GPA? Three, how can we control for initial differences between groups either due to chance or because observations cannot be randomized fully? So basically what we are saying here is we have a dependent variable, which is the study skills assessment. But we have this other variable, covariate, of GPA that we want to control for, that we want to account for, that we want to treat as if the students had the same GPA, so we're only measuring the study skills assessment. So all three of these statements here are ways you can think about what ANCOVA does for us. So now our data might look like this. So we still have our year one scores, year two scores, and year three scores, but now we also have our covariate, which is GPA. 
So you can see for the first student in year one, they scored a 53 out of 100 on the study skills assessment and their GPA was measured at 2.46 and on and down the columns and across. So this is what our data looks like with the covariate of GPA there in the green color. So that's all great, but why ANCOVA? So obviously ANCOVA is just ANOVA with a C added to it. The C stands for covariance. ANOVA is analysis of variance, of course. So ANCOVA is analysis of covariance. Now remember that covariance is the measure of the joint variability between two variables. Covariance measures direction, either positive or negative. How do large or small values in one variable compare to large or small values in the other variable? As a side note, when covariance is standardized, we call it correlation. So ANCOVA is an extension of ANOVA in which main effects and interactions are assessed after dependent variable scores are adjusted for the differences associated with one or more covariates that are measured before the dependent variable and are correlated with it. Now, that's a mouthful. Let's take it step by step. So, ANCOVA is an extension of ANOVA. That makes sense. In which main effects and interactions, we should know what those are, are assessed after the dependent variable scores are adjusted. So the dependent variable scores, in this case, the study skills assessment, are adjusted for differences associated with one or more covariates, in this case, GPA, that are measured before the dependent variable and are correlated with it. So the covariate, in this case, GPA, must be correlated with the dependent variable, in this case, study skills. So ANCOVA is a way of controlling for initial individual differences that could not be randomized. So obviously we were not randomizing people by their GPA. It just came along with them in the study. Now the focus is one of determining the effects of the independent variable. So in this case, it's the levels of your school year, year one, two, and three, on the dependent variable, which in this case is study skills, adjusted for the presence of covariates in the model. So you can think of this as what we're looking for are any differences in year one, two, and three students on the dependent variable of study skills while adjusting for their GPA. So there are two main purposes for ANCOVA. One, to increase the sensitivity of the test for main effects and interactions by reducing the error term. And this will be more evident here in a minute. The error term is adjusted for and hopefully reduced by the relationship between the dependent variable and the covariate or covariates. Covariates are used to assess the, quote, noise, where noise is the undesirable variance in the dependent variable that is estimated by scores on the covariate. So what we're saying here is that there's some variance in the dependent variable, in this case study skills, that could be accounted for or estimated by scores in the covariate, which is GPA. Because again, people who have better study skills may be those who have better GPAs to begin with. Two, to adjust the means, actually adjust the means on the levels of the dependent variable itself, in this case, the study skill scores for year one, two, and three, to what they would be if all subjects scored equally on the covariates. So differences between subjects on the covariates are removed so that presumably the only difference left, the only difference that remains, is related to the effects of the grouping of the independent variables, in this case, year one, two, and three. The covariates enhance prediction of the dependent variable, but there's no implication of causality. So the two main purposes, number one, reduce the error term in the ANOVA table. Okay, and we'll see what that looks like here in a second. Two, to adjust the means on the levels of the dependent variable. So if you remember our data, when we had just the three columns for year one, two, and three, 
we could find the means of those three columns very easily. But what ANCOVA can do is take the means that we find and adjust them because of the presence of the covariate. So let's go back to ANOVA really quickly and how we partition the sum of squares in ANOVA. So we have our total sum of squares when we read our ANOVA table. And it's divided into two things, our main effects and interaction sum of squares, and then our error sum of squares, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna have a list of our main effects, we'll have a, a list of our interaction sum of squares, and then we'll have our error sum of squares. And that's just in regular ANOVA. Now for ANCOVA, we do one more step. So this is where we were before. We have our total sum of squares partitioned in the main effect and interaction sum of squares and our error sum of squares. But now, because of ANCOVA and the presence of the covariate, we now split our error sum of squares into error sum of squares, but also our covariate sum of squares. So what happens here? When we do this, when we assign some of the original error, hopefully, to the covariate, that has the effect of reducing our error sum of squares. So you can see how our error sum of squares actually became smaller in this graphic because some of the error went to the covariate. So remember, our F statistic is MSC over MSE. Now, how does this work? When we reduce the SSC over here, or the error sum of squares, see what happens to this fraction? So reduced SSE leads to reduced MSC. The smaller MSC leads to a larger F statistic because of this fraction. When the bottom gets smaller, that means the overall F statistic will get larger, thus increasing the power of the F test. So remember, the one use of ANCOVA can be to reduce this error sum of squares. That has the effect of making the F test more powerful because it reduces this denominator of MSE. Now what about the second use? So remember in regular ANOVA, we'll have our three uh, populations here, and we wanna see if a difference exists somewhere among them. So what we're really asking is, do all three of these means come from a common population? Is one mean or two means so far away from the other one or two that it is likely not from the same population? Or are all three so far apart that they all likely come from unique populations? So ANCOVA will allow us to do this. So here are our three means from before. Now this is sort of an exaggerated way of looking at it, but how means can be adjusted under ANCOVA. So with ANOVA, here are our means. However, when we run the ANCOVA and we adjust the means, they might end up moving. So the blue one could go there, this could go there, and this could go there. So we're actually adjusting the location of our means using ANCOVA by the process of having that covariate in the model. We're literally moving the means. And then from there, that will change our F test. Then we could do a post hoc analysis such as Tukey or Bonferroni to see whether or not some difference exists on the adjusted means. Okay, so quick review. Two main purposes of ANCOVA. One, to increase the sensitivity of the F test for main effects and interactions by reducing the error term. So that was the first thing we looked at. We take the SSC or this error sum of squares and we split it further into SSC, but usually smaller, and some of the error goes to the covariate. So that's the first way, and that has the result of increasing the power of our F test. Two, to actually adjust the means of the levels of the dependent variable. So in the previous graphic, I showed you how the means could actually move by doing ANCOVA, we'll get a new set of means and they could change position and it could change the outcome of the F test, whether it's significant or not. So that's a very quick introduction of what ANCOVA is and how it might be used. Now again, this is just the first video, so we will do be doing more with ANCOVA, of course, in subsequent videos. I'll fire up a stat software package and we'll actually show you um, how to go through the ANCOVA process because there are steps to ANCOVA. You gotta check certain assumptions and things like that to make sure the test is actually valid. 
So we will do that in uh, subsequent videos and look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching.